Well, hello there, Natalie Esquire. Nice to see you again. What's up? Uh, we know you got a, a lot on your mind. You've been uh, walking these streets of, of, of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you got, always got your ear to the ground, your ear to the streets. You know what the people are saying. Um, and you got a lot to say. You got a lot on your mind, I'm sure. We have no idea where you're taking this. <laughs> like, like where, I have no idea what topic you're going to bring up. <sighs> Neither Michael nor I has prepared. <laughs> so be gentle. Of course. Take of it away. Course. Yeah, you know, so there's obviously been a lot of enthusiasm over the NCAA Women's Tournament, right? And we're seeing all the headlines, the ratings, and not just for Iowa with Caitlin Clark. Obviously, we know she's the preeminent name, but we're seeing all the ratings for all the games come in strong, right? And they've been really exciting games. And so one of the things that I was really surprised to see is commentary, because I thought we were past this point, is everyone sort of like clutching their pearls about the women cursing or being like passionate on the court. So, you know, recently when Iowa played, you know, um, Caitlin Clark, it appears, and we, we, you know, we like to lip read, but it appears that she said, shut the f up, you know, <laughs> while yeah. she was on the court. And it looked like, the reason why it's a little confusing is because it looked like she was yelling it at the crowd, but you're like, why would she yell that to the home crowd? So some people are saying she says, stand up or get the, f you know, but the point is she definitely, we know the, the, the F up part, that was definitely there. And people just like, there was so much like, you know, commentary around it. And then also before that game, she had another game where like, she just, she wasn't playing her best. So she like threw the ball at her head and she was arguing a lot with the refs that her father, there was like, they just kept going to it. Her father was like, stop, like yelling at her from the crowd. And so then it was this talk about, oh, you know, like um, she doesn't need to be behaving like that. And, you know, especially when they're up that much. And I do think it's a little whiny, but I'm like, this is stuff that happens in the men's game all the time. And it continued, you know, Angel Reese, the opponent that uh, LSU was playing, she fouled out of the game oh, no. and she, wave bye-bye because that's what we do right like that's what happens in sports they taunt they do things and of course the classless comments came um and we'll get into what some of that means but she was called classless and you know the diva all those kinds of things and then cameron brink out of stanford she fouled out and walking off the court she told someone f you we don't know if it was a ref <laughs> We don't know who she said it to, but it was very clear that she said, F you. And people were just like, oh, oh my gosh. And so I'm like, why, why can't women show passion? And I'm just, I'm just surprised because I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, there's a lot of commentary always about women's sports and there's always the haters and things like that. But I just thought we've evolved in a place where we know that they're athletes and they're gonna show passion and this shouldn't be a big deal still. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I don't know about you, Mike. I'm surprised that uh, there's an expectation that we've evolved. <laughs> I don't think we've evolved <laughs> to that point. That's a, that, that's a, I'm not surprised by the cussing. And nor am I surprised by the commentary because a lot of people still don't get it. Look, you start with Caitlin Clark. She's the all-time leading scorer in NCAA history, men and women. She's the all-time leading scorer. She's a great player. She's a competitor. All, she's going to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. So why wouldn't she? I'd be surprised if she didn't drop some F-bombs every now and then. So uh, anybody who is, who is looking at them, looking at these players, and kind of assigning value to how they should be acting is probably stuck in a different time. I mean, it's a pretty simple answer. If you don't talk about men that way, you talk about women that way. Why is that? I think we know what we, we know what that's about, right, Natalie? We know what we know where that's coming from. Yes, but don't we for want men that and in women. sports? Don't we for want men and women? Right, but don't we want it to be fiery, right? And like this is this yes. is you know this of is course. just like okay, this I'm talking about the cursing, right? And I mentioned. I mentioned with Angel, right, that there's the class list because somehow the commentary, like in, in comparison of all the things that happen, waving bye-bye on the court versus potentially cursing at a ref or cursing at the crowd, of the three, if we're ranking them in order of offensiveness, I feel like waving bye-bye is probably the least offensive, yet her right. criticism seemed the harshest. So aside from the gender dynamics at play, 
as you know, there's also a racial um, component and element when it comes to Angel Reese. And so that's to be expected. Um, not that it's a good thing, I expect that, but I was just still overall shocked. I was shocked to see any kind of criticism of Caitlin Clark because I feel like it doesn't come. And I'm like, if this is the thing we're gonna criticize Caitlin Clark over, it seems really silly to me. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.